Good morning, Mets fans, and happy hump day. It is Wednesday, and you are joining me for Driving with Mr. Met. Thanks for popping in. The Mets won last night, and the magic number is now 10. No, they're not 10 games out of a wild card spot or first place. Well, they might be. I don't, I don't think they are, but... No, the magic number is 10 because now the Mets are only 10 games under 500. As I predicted, they would climb out of their minus 11 hole and start inching back toward a more respectable record. They'll continue that quest today with Rafael Montero on the mound. So it's, it's interesting uh, when you look at the last month or so worth of baseball, and you look at what Rafael Montero has done in that time frame, and I don't have his stats and I didn't bother to look them up, but just, you know, the eye test, um, he's looked like a completely different pitcher over his last four or five starts. Um, he's attacking more, he's not picking as much as he used to, he looks like he's developing some confidence, which, you know, if you'd asked me if he would ever get there um, at the beginning of the season, I would have said no, because... I just never thought it was in the cards for him. I just felt like he was never going to get out of his own way. But it looks like in the scheme of everything shitty that's happened this year, um, maybe one of the, the positive bright notes is the fact that along the way, uh, this miserable shit ride that has been the 2017 season along the way, uh, Rafael, Rafael Montero may have found the confidence that he needs to become what everyone predicted he would become, which is a pitcher with really, really good stuff. Um, one of the young aces that the Mets were touting for all the years uh, leading up to the debuts of Harvey and DeGrom and Syndergaard and everybody else. Um, Montero, remember, was right up there with everybody else. In fact, he was uh, much higher on the depth chart than Jacob DeGrom ever was. And um, as I've said before, we all see, have seen how that's worked itself out. So proving that the depth chart means nothing when you're talking about prospects. Um, <laughs> You just can never tell when a prospect is going to pan out or fizzle out. But Montero is on the hill, not tonight, this afternoon. It's a 12 o'clock game, and, uh, you know, it's a, I think they call it the camp day. And so it's unfortunate that Keith won't be in the booth today because he would probably have some funny things to say about all the kids in the stadium with their different colored shirts on, and I can only imagine it. Um, so that's at noon today, so in a couple of hours. But uh, last night the Mets were successful, as I'd said, uh, in uh, in winning a game, just their third win in their last ten games. But uh, it was nice to see the Mets being aggressive early on against A.J. Griffin, who basically had a spot start in relief of uh, Andrew Kashner. And if you, if you had poor eyesight, you'd never been able to tell the difference between the two because with their full beards, um, they look basically the same uh, on the mound. I thought that was funny. In fact, I had the first, uh, the first inning was muted. I didn't get to really watch any of it, or sorry, listen to any of it. And I didn't pay attention that closely to notice that it wasn't Kashner on the mound. It wasn't until the, uh, the second inning that uh, I actually got to listen in and hear that it was actually A.J. Griffin. But anyway, um, nice to see Conforto doing what he does out of the leadoff spot, leading off the game with a home run. I think it's his sixth leadoff home run this year, if I, if I remember correctly. I think they said it last night on the broadcast. I think they said six. Um, he's approaching Curtis Granderson's record, which he set two years ago, uh, out of the leadoff hole for leadoff home runs. Good for Michael. He's got, uh, you know, six or seven weeks to build on that. But the question remains, how much longer is Conforto going to want, going to stay, uh, stay in the leadoff spot? They talked about it last night on the broadcast, and, um, uh, you know, Gary had suggested that maybe they would move him once they promote Dom Smith, and they kind of t t uh, take her with the lineup a little bit. And Ronnie sort of said, no, let's not mess with him. Everything's been going well with him. He's one of the few things that have been going well. Um, don't mess with him. He's doing fine out of the leadoff hole. And I, I kind of agree with both sentiments. You know, I like uh, the idea of not messing with Conforto. But um, as Keith has often said, it really doesn't matter um, as far as being a hitter and, like, the approach and how you uh, approach at-bats. Um, it really doesn't matter if you're a good hitter. You'll adapt. 
you know, and Conforto has has proven that he's a good hitter because he's adapted very well to bat, be, being a leadoff batter. His on-base percentage is high. Um, he sees a lot of pitches, usually. Um, he does have that pop out of the leadoff spot. He, is he a prototypical speedster at the top of the order? Absolutely not, but he's the best option for the Mets uh, at this point. Um, I think what we're seeing from Ahmed Rosario so far is proof that at some point in the very near future, perhaps as early as next season, he will be leading off for this team. Uh, he's got the speed, and having him at the leadoff spot can move Conforto back into his natural role, which I think we all agree is as the number three hitter uh, on the team. So, um, also of note last night, two quick things. Uh, Chris Flexen earned his first major league win and also earned his first major league hit. Uh, so kudos to Flexen. I was nervous for him uh, going into the game because of how the, the Rangers can mash, but uh, it didn't matter at the end. So that was number one. And number two, uh, A.J. Ramos earns his first save, albeit in a shaky fashion, um, his first save as a Met. Uh, and uh, he shouldn't get used to that role because I think he'll end up slotting back into uh, the Addison Reed role that, uh, that Rito filled over the last you know, basically two seasons uh, where he'll be setting up for Familia when Jerry comes off the DL. So again, 12 o'clock today. I will be back tomorrow uh, in the morning to recap today's game and talk about the start of the next series, which is tomorrow night in Philly. So uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.